Hey, uh, Dak, you ever heard of Joe Boo? James. I know who it is, man. You know who it is. I've been hung out with him. Boo. I'm doing great, man. Congratulations on the baby, man. Beautiful thing. Dak, there's your buddy. Good morning, good people, and happy game day. Our very first of three preseason games, and we will be there in SoFi Field. In fact, we'll be leaving in a few hours to get to the field. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, it has been a great experience out here at training camp. Um, we've got all kinds of storylines and things going on, of course, with the team full of drama. But first, let's focus in on this preseason game. You want to... Rule number one of preseason is you want to get in, get some work done, and get out without injuries because you don't want to have in a meaningless game that you lose a player for the season or for any length of time. And for the San Francisco 49ers, they lost one of their cornerbacks, Aubrey Thomas, uh, to a broken, looks like, forearm, and it's going to be having him sidelines indefinitely, a tough break for them. But this is what you worry about with preseason because this is really your first totally live contact. It's still crazy to me in, uh, you know, growing up when I did where we had two a days that are live contact you know you're tackling people to the ground in the two a days for six weeks and now the nfl has 14 padded practices and you're not taking guys to the ground at least not intentionally so this game is the first time somebody will be tackled to the ground and for me i still believe that um your body gets calloused gets used to the contact and stuff to me Today's NFL is like if you were a race car driver and you practice driving 55 mile an hour all week and then you're driving 200 on Sunday. It doesn't work the same, but be that as it may, it's what we have in this day and age. So hopefully we get in, we get some work done and that nobody gets hurt. The um, There's a lot of storylines and things in here. This is Trey Lance's opportunity to get into the spotlight and to turn the narrative around. Um, I'm gonna say, I don't believe that he's had a great training camp. I don't think anybody will disagree with me. He, I'm not saying give up on him, not, not at all. We gave up a fourth round draft pick and we need some dividends on there. Would the perfect scenario would be is he plays really, really well today, next week and the following week and potentially, um, Maybe down the road he could be the replacement for Dak Prescott. He may have to be the replacement for Dak Prescott if they don't get the contract signed or possibly somebody that you can trade for to help this team this season. Thus far, we don't see either of those things happening at the moment, but then again, it's football. Some people are gamers. Some people are practice players. Hopefully, Trey will be a gamer, and we'll see some really good stuff tonight to the point where Jerry Jones says, Dak who? Dak who? Okay, yeah, that, that would be I, the ideal situation. But there's a lot of young players that you want to see because there are guys that are fighting for their NFL lives. Um, and this is a conversation me and Law had with all of these young wide receivers. I mean, we got Jalen, Jalen, and Jalen, and you would think it was a law firm out there. But Jalen Brooks has been really good, but he may be on the bubble as well as Jalen um, Clopper. Jalen Copper has looked really, really good, but I don't know that you're going to be able to keep both of them. So this is the opportunity for one or the other to separate themselves to basically claim a stake on this roster. You want to see the progression um, out of need now, too, for a guy like Marshawn Nealon, because we're going to need Marshawn Nealon now that Sam Williams is done for the season. And you want to see the progression. I don't know if Mozzie Smith will be out there. Uh, I, I, I don't know if he'll be playing or not, but you want to see the progression, if he is out there, of how he's looking. I, I believe he's completely changed his body um, totally from doing what he was asked to do in college, which was just clog up the middle. Now he's being taught to penetrate and attack the quarterback. 
and now he's got a slimmer body, more strength. He's getting his man body on, and I want you guys to keep in mind, he's only 23 years old, so I'm looking forward to seeing him play out there as well, and um, see how all this comes together, and see a little, get a little taste of Mike Zimmer. Now, you're not going to see any game planning. There is no game planning for this. This is just, we're going to do basic stuff, we're going to line up, and we're going to see how each one of these men perform. So, yes, it is a game, but it's not really a game. So, don't get too excited and don't get too upset by what you see. The real game right now is being played with C.D. Lamb. And it didn't take long for trade rumors now um, happening because we know what's been going on with Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk, allegedly, it's down to two teams. Either they work a deal out at San Francisco for him to stay, or he goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. One or the other. So we don't know which way it's going to go. It seemed like he was already out the door. We know that Cleveland was making an offer <clears throat> and um, was looking to trade Amari Cooper in the trade with San Francisco. Um, that one fell through. We also heard that New England really and truly wanted to get Brandon Ayuk and was willing to give up, um, I believe, a first-round pick. So now, of course, people are saying, well, <laughs> New England, of course, desperate for a wide receiver. They're ready to trade, and the Cowboys have a receiver who hasn't signed, and things seem to be getting ugly. They're, of course, connecting the dots, even if the dots aren't there, because you want to talk about the Dallas Cowboys. That would be an interesting take if the Cowboys were to get a first-round pick from New England because New England's first-round pick would be probably a high one since they are starting the clock all over and rebuilding. Um, then you could potentially have two number ones, and if you don't sign Dak, then you potentially have something to trade up to try and get secure Sanders. I guess if that's the, the, the big picture here, you're going to have to do that. Mind you, in my mind, CeeDee Lamb's going to be signed. This is just with wash, rinse, repeat with the Cowboys, where they always do the same stupid stuff. Um, they take too long to make the contracts. They end up paying too much on them because they do them in a hurry. And, you know, you've since screwed over the team. That's what the Cowboys do. <sighs> However, if your thoughts are, we are tired of this group of people and we want to start the clock over, best thing to do is start the clock over by trading C.D. Lamb. My whole point was, if you're saying, you know, one last shot to win the Super Bowl and you're not doing anything to try and win it, then, you know, and your plan is, if it doesn't work, we're going to blow it up. It's like, why wait? Because if you don't try to do something different than what you did before, you're going to get the same results. You're just wasting another year. If your thoughts are, we're blowing it up, you trade C.D. Lamb, you ham hamstring the team so they play worse, so you'll get a higher draft pick the following year. It's pretty simple. If you really want to do that, bench Dak and let Trey Lance start the whole season. That way you might have two picks in the top ten. So, that's what you do. In the meantime, this is actually pretty good from ESPN, and it seems like ESPN is evolving some of the sports talk these days because they're talking about the Joneses and C.D. Lamb and his people having the beef. Let's listen in before we get out of here. Roll here with all your football Friday, including the Cowboys. Here's what happened. They play their preseason opener Sunday against the Rams. They're going to do it without C.D. Lamb. He continues to hold out looking for a contract. Yesterday, Jerry Jones was asked about a timeline. Listen to this. Jerry, Are you saying there's a sense curtain. of urgency as you begin the preseason to get CD down, done? No. No? Why do you say that? I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, I just, uh, I went to high school or I went to college. I don't know why I said it, but I'm just saying I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a sense of urgency about getting it done. So I don't understand why he's laughing at that. So anyway, the Athletics' John Machota then tweeted that, saying, I don't have an urgency to get it done. And moments later, C.D. Lamb quote tweeted it. 
with the letters LOL. This was a quote tweet. He quote tweeted the tweet saying LOL. And it's worth mentioning, Micah Parsons retweeted C.D. Lamb's LOL. So this is the 2024 version of like all out warfare, right? Like we have social media beef amongst the Cowboys. Now you talk to the people down there, Danny, I count on you. I mean, Jerry's laughing about not having urgency for a guy who is his entire offense. I mean, let's be as clear as we can be. C.D. Lamb is that offense. So how, how should we be reacting to this? Well, we often say on this show, what is Jerry always doing? He's negotiating, right? right. He's mm -hmm. not going to say, oh, yeah, we're desperate to get this done. That's going to hurt his negotiating stance. So he says no. And then they ask him why he said that. And he's like, I don't know. Like, uh, that's what I'm supposed to say in this situation. <laughs> and then CD quote tweets it and basically saying, mm. I'm not buying that. Like, I don't, you're not going to scare me. So this is just so negotiating going I think on. So. That's how I see it. Yeah, with Jerry, that's how I, I think he's always doing that. Uh, so look, they've had conversations. They've gone back and forth. I, I still don't, I don't see a situation where this doesn't get done. But, but I think it is fair to wonder what's taking so long. You know, Green, to take the other side of that, when I sat in that seat and I was negotiating, I was very conscious of what my actions and words were gonna resonate in the locker room. And if I'm a Dallas Cowboy, not named C.D. Lamb, I'm thinking like, if he's saying that about C.D. Lamb, what's he thinking about me? That yeah, can really, really hurt morale. And I know that was not the intended consequence, but Jerry Jones should take a half a step back. You have a lot of good young players they want to know when they're going to get taken care of. And if you're making fun of your best player, what do you think about me? It's another For example real? of the owner and general manager being the same person, creating a very unique set of circumstances. You were not the owner at any point while you were doing that. And so it does all play out kind of differently. All right, Mike, I need you to explain this to me. I remind anyone who doesn't know, Mike Tannenbaum was the general manager of two different NFL teams. And I've used this analogy while you were away. I used it a couple of times last week. I'm very bad at art, right? If you asked me to draw you a picture of an really animal bad. right now, and I did, you would never know what animal I was trying to draw. But when I was a kid, even I could color within the numbers, right? They would say, where you see a number one, color it blue. Where you see a number you know, two, color it red. This is coloring within the numbers. All the receivers are getting deals. His draft class, he was in the same draft class as Justin Jefferson. He's been exactly as productive as any of them. Like, the, it is coloring within the numbers. Why is it taking this long? I don't know. Take a step further. It's costing them tens of millions of dollars. If they had done it in February, we all knew where the receiver market was going to go. Start with Devontae Smith, Amara St. Brown, on and on and on, all the way up. Tyreek Hill just got done. We know where Justin Jefferson is. It's at least seven or eight million dollars a year, Green. So not only is it paint by the numbers, but on a salary cap system, when you want to get Parsons and Dak Prescott signed, every day it's costing you money. The sense of urgency they don't have has hurt them strategically. Uh, look, I, and I don't want to sit here and, and, and like sound like I'm defending them because I'm not. I, I, I think they probably should have done it last year, and they would have saved a great it deal really of money. But have. the way they operate. They're looking at it, we want to get CD signed long-term, Dak signed long-term, Parsons at some point signed long-term. What does the cap look like this many years out? We have to structure the deal a certain way. I don't think it's about how much they're going to pay him. I think everybody sort of understands where that ends up landing. I think it's about how it, how it plays, and how it's, how it's structured, the length of the deal, when, when he gets the money, all that kind of stuff. Same stuff we were talking about with Dak Prescott like three, four years right. ago. And that's right? why I need to push back at you here. Yeah, yeah, and no, I, I understand what you're again, saying. Again, I'm not, I'm I not know arguing you're not. their side. But for the purposes yeah. of this discussion, you're the Cowboys. All right. Okay, I get that you are not. But because you have said that about Dak, somehow every other team figures this stuff I, out. I yes. Somehow every other team has yes. a, a quarterback they need to get a deal done with, and they're, they figure out what the cap's going to look like someday mm -hmm. and they get the deal done they have a superstar receiver that they drafted that they developed they did everything right they get the it's deal the done these I, every other team manages to do it i, I agree they are they're a strange organization they operate their they're own way jerry jones likes drama he likes the attention he doesn't mind that this is a topic we keep talking about at this point with a month to go before the season they don't feel like they've lost anything in terms of their preparation this is how they operate agree when you're sense. running a team you're looking at your division and the juxtaposition of this is the Eagles that they go out they yes. extend Devontae Smith they extend AJ Brown early and oh by the way now they have room to go get Saquon Barkley so like to me if I'm the Cowboys strategically knowing I have these three great players it's only gonna get more expensive and it's gonna hurt you from improving your team and it's worth underlining that team has been in the Super Bowl twice in the last five or six years whatever they however long ago that the, the Doug Bowl. Peterson one was so it's working it's not, it's not hey, just that they're not. doing it but that there is obvious ex uh, illustration I'm willing to live with Dak walking.
I'm, I'm willing to live at the end walk. of this year with Dak walking. I haven't won anything with him anyway, so I'm willing to live with that. I'm not, I don't know that he's doing that, but he's let's not. just even well, live yeah. in a world where okay. he's doing that. C.D. Lamb and Micah Parsons are the foundation of your franchise going forward no matter what. This guy, these guys don't grow on trees. If, yeah, if you you're not think. keeping C.D. Lamb long term, then what are you doing? I mean, he's your right. first round pick. He has just turned in a monster season that ranks with anybody's. Like, like this is a guy you – he's caused you no trouble. Like, like he's been, a, he's no been an outstanding player, all, an outstanding Zero. teammate, an outstanding citizen. He deserves everything that he's going to get. I still think he gets it. But I don't know why it's always so painful with that. Again, we're in the ultimate people business. When you have a productive player who's high character, you pay them immediately. It sends the right message to the locker room. And the other part of this is, I've seen this a million times, we all have. With the Cowboys. You wait yeah. this long, what happens is he comes in. Yeah, of course he gets the deal done. Mm-hmm. He comes in, he's behind everybody else, he's trying like crazy Ooh. to catch up to speed, and the hamstring goes. Ooh. It happens all the time. Oh, don't say that one, though. Don't say the hamstring goes. But seriously, it's like we continue to do the same stupid things. CD will get paid. He's not getting traded to New England. That's not going to happen. But, you know. It's just crazy. And the fact that it's cost CD $1.5 million as of today for holding out as long as he has. It's just ridiculous. There's no reason. It's not like there haven't been contracts out there to give you the market range and things that it should be. But, you know, Jerry doesn't doesn't care. When you've got the amount of money that he has, he can do what he wants with the team. Alrighty, good people, we will see you at SoFi Field later today. Peace out.